I warned you it was going to do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Hello My and welcome goodness. to another <laughs> heaping. Uh, what what did they say after that? Like heaping, helping, helping, heaping, I, heaving. I like heaping, helping. Yeah, not well, heaving, helping. <laughs> right, but it's 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 it it goes in threes. It's heaping. Hot heap and helping. Hot heap and helping. Let's go with that. Hot heap and helping of Owlbear Soup. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Justin. <laughs> I'm your other host, Rich. Uh, hot heap and helping hee-haw. <laughs> Is that it? Is that what we want? Is that the I, Owlbear Soup brand? <laughs> hee-haw. No, I, 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 do, I do like the hee-haw at the end of it. I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's very appropriate. <laughs> oh man uh so it's been a wild week but we are here back yes. yeah there's some really fun news really interesting news uh <laughs> but we are back and we are here for uh to bring you some news uh from the gaming world uh tabletop gaming specifically also we have a fantastic guest today some of you may have played adventures and organized play by this gentleman read books or anything by this guy uh this is mr sean merwin He's uh, pretty fantastic. And uh, on top of that, um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. I know, uh, yeah. I know those of you watching us live, today is Fire, uh, Father's Day. Thanks for hanging out. Those of us watching us later on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and uh, let us know what you think of the show. Yeah. I, do, I do pop on and I check the comments. So, uh, <laughs> because i hate myself no no we we, we, we we have not gotten any comments that i'm worried about yet none, none of them are okay, bad good. i think i think it's all good so because uh, we want to learn we just want generate <laughs> genuine feedback yeah exactly just just be nice to us um yeah so i got a uh i don't know what kind of gaming you did but i got a chance oh, so to much. uh to, to you know play a play a one shot with some of my uh Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I got a chance to play with, uh, some D and D with some of my friends just playing a one shot just to kind of like, you know, get, get the, get the muscles rolling again. And, Ooh. uh, I decided I was going to play a turtle. Okay. okay. Uh, I've never yeah. played a turtle before and I decided, really? uh, yeah, I decided I was going to play a sorcerer turtle. Uh, um, might as well. Yeah, so so essentially, like I maxed out strength because of the new way the 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 rules work. I can give myself a plus two in strength and a plus one in whatever, mm -hmm. which was charisma, and uh, so I maxed out my strength. So we were we, it was a uh, level four adventure. So I had an eighteen strength. Okay. Uh, I had eighteen strength. I had to crush your feet, and I had a booming blade. So what I did was I walked up to things two handed and I smacked them with with my uh, with my quarter staff. Using sure. booming blade uh, and crusher, so crusher pushes them five feet away from me, and then if they move because of booming blade, they take elect extra electric damage. Uh, oh, okay, okay. And so, 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 so I built this entirely gish uh, sorcerer using um, uh, the divine soul uh, sorcerer class, so that I could get shield of faith, uh -huh. and then I could use uh, quicken casting with. Um, with the sorcerer so that as a bonus action, I can cast shield of faith. I could cast blur, uh, sure. you know, so I'm like this defensive powerhouse or, you know, I don't want to fall too behind far behind on the attacks. So I can, uh, what is it? A holy, a spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon was my bonus action attack in rounds. So, oh my God. So, <laughs> so I'd smack things with my, my, uh, staff, push them five feet right into my spiritual weapon, which would then hit them. And then if they tried to attack, me they'd have to move towards me and take electric damage whoa i'm not a good that's person. wild i'm not no. a good person uh you're a monster i'm a monster <laughs> and uh that was that was that may be that may be my favorite build i've done and the thing is is because I've, I've i've done a turtle so i started off with with a with a 17 uh you know a, yeah. a 17 ac anyway uh oh the chat says uh, nice uh haunted mansion background rich why thank you i was able for my birthday to go take a trip and i got to see it recently i'm a, yeah. I'm a big fan of the haunt for for a building for a ride that when i went on the first time when i was like six or something i kept my eyes closed the entire time um i've really grown to like the haunted mansion <laughs> yeah i think it's i think it's one of those things where uh you know i've i've also i think if i went back i'd be much more interested in haunted mansion than many other rides at disney disney isn't is it is it, is it, is it isn't my cup of tea but i grew up in florida and we went to uh, Walt Disney World like twice a summer because 
when you live in Florida and you have Walt Disney World sure. there, one, you go have your birthday there. Two, you uh, end up having family coming in from out of town. And what's the one thing they want to do when they go to Florida? They want to go to the beach. They want to go no. uh, to Disney. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, so in, in, in one year I broke broke the trend. I was like, yeah, you know what? Let's go to SeaWorld this year. Uh, I want to do something else. And um, and uh, it, and SeaWorld <laughs> was sad. Even even as yeah. like a, a 10 year old, 11 year old Justin, I was so sad for all the fish. So I because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's 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 a very different experience than going to an aquarium. And uh, I I really I really didn't like seeing the animals, the, the huge animals mm -hmm. in the cage. I mean, it was cool to see the huge animals. Right. right. But at the same time, I was like, oh, well, that doesn't seem as fun. And so you've had to move across the country because of the incident, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> I'm Good not, allowed, not allowed in Florida anymore. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. <laughs> but but to make up to it, we went to uh, for my mom's uh, for my mother's 60th birthday. Uh, Audrey and I, we went up to Victoria, B.C., uh, and we went on a uh, an orca watching tour and it was fantastic. Oh, wow. I was I was so pleased. We got to see orcas. Uh, we got to see them with their fins up. They were happy. They they were playing. It was two pods <laughs> of them coming together. And I guess they had some kids. So there was some playing going on. Oh, man, it was amazing. Oh, that sounds way better. Okay. Yeah. Very positive. The, I've only had a, wonderful experiences in Victoria, BC, the uh, the jewel of the Northwest. <laughs> I, I need to go back because I need to two things. One, I need to ride the water taxis. And two, uh -huh. I need to figure out how to become a water taxi driver because that's going to be my retirement job. Oh, gosh. It sounds like there's going to be another incident. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. Uh, wow. I am really excited that you got the chance to play the turtle because I have lots of students and they love it. I mean, turtle is, is so easy to just look at and be like, so my deal is I'm a turtle. Um, yeah. I hide in my shell when I get scared. Also, uh, I just have this ridiculous AC, nothing can hit me and, and just kind of moving on from there. So we, I, I've had parties with three turtles in them. Because it's just fun. It's fun, especially at low mm -hmm. levels. Like I, I do think. Oh yeah. I, I, I was theory crafting up to level ten, and I think at some point, the effectiveness of the sorcerer Gish uh, starts to die off a little bit, and you start leaning more into the sorcerer side. So you could either do that, right. or you could multi-class. And at that point, I would suggest multi-classing into fighter, uh, or paladin, but probably fighter mostly just to get the additional attacks per round. Though if you went paladin, that's the only way you can get any real extra bonuses to your you know, your, uh, I almost called them nads, uh, your non AC defenses. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, well, I mean, that's what we used to call them on the, on the care op forums. We used to call them nads. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway. Wow. 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 Intriguing. Non armor uh, defenses. There we go. Non armor defenses. I just immediately started thinking about like fourth head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. A rabbit right. hole in my head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Very cool. Yeah, so um, um, I went and battled wow. on about my gaming, and it led to Disney World talk. So tell me, tell me, did you do any gaming this week? I did. Uh, yesterday was our first day, so our, our local gaming store, Geeky Tees and Games, reopened on Tuesday, and it's very clear. Um, you know, come in, bring your proof of vaccination, have a mask on, stuff like that. And so we came in, and we had our local playtesting event, and this is a thing I've been doing for a couple of years now, which is. Uh, Oh gosh, uh, First Play LA, that's it. Um, it's basically a prototyping group and designers can show up with games in kind of whatever condition they have them in and people will show up and play them. We we used to hold it monthly and this was our first one back. Oh, wow. So it was really nice because we got around and because we were all vaccinated, you know, the, <laughs> the rules were once you get to the table, you're all sitting around, you're ready to play a yeah. game. If you all feel comfortable and you're all like, in a good spot you can demask and I, I made the additional rule that you had to like you know say fear is the mind killer and, and all the rest of it you know do the whole dune litany um uh it was just in my head for no reason um and it was what? great it was what? great to just Wait, play games dune what? was in your huh? head for no reason i've just read the entire uh 300 page rpg in the last couple of days wow. <laughs> now i gotta write read the book um but it was great. And there are some games there. I got to play two, I think, real quick. One was a, this great like social deduction game. Um, uh, latest in this series, very logical, trying to figure out who everyone else at the table is. You win when you can accuse everyone and know all their secret roles. But all the roles have another way to win the game. So it was very fun. 
Um, I liked it. Um, I have to blank it on the game right now, unfortunately. Plus, I can't tell you too much. It's a, it's um, a playtest. It's a play test. Uh, also, this superhero game. And oh, my gosh, it's fantastic. It was so good. Uh, I can't wait for it to show up on Kickstarter. I will back that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll um, be able to tell us about it. Exactly. We'll, we'll talk about it a whole lot because it's amazing. It does one thing very, very well. Um, That's awesome. Let's see. Uh, and then I had to leave that event a little bit early and come home because we had a game night that went on from like four to ten. We invited a couple friends over and we played. Oh my gosh, we played. I've never heard of Oh My Gosh. We played Oh My Gosh. Uh, we played the Tea Dragon Society. Um, beautiful little dragon game. Um, hanging out, flipping over cards. You're sleeping, you're feeding, you are um, grooming, and then sometimes you bite and, and are, are frustrated and grumpy, and so you, you lose some of your... <laughs> it's very silly. It's great. <laughs> 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 like to get to deck builder you're just buying cards unless these like mischief cards lower your you know take away some of your buying power you know sometimes you groom yourself but then you bite yourself and you you waste all that grooming so you just discard those cards <laughs> it's great That's wild yeah um let's see we did that we played um uh certainly played splendor we played azul just busting out some of our classics that we really like as a group um and then we played the shipwreck arcana and I, I don't know if you've heard of this game. This no. is a game that was on Kickstarter four years ago, maybe you five at this shipwreck. point. Shipwreck, I'm in. It's so, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> it is a, a game that is uh, all about logical deduction. It is tarot plus math. Um, okay, and no, so it's Okay, you, you end up like getting these two tiles. Uh, there's two numbers on them and you have to basically use one of those to hint to the rest of the team what the tile you held back is, if that makes sense. So like I have a four and a five. I'm going to use the five in order to hint that my other one is a four. Um, and you have like these tarot cards and they all say like, put one of your, your numbers here if your numbers are one apart or if they are like both even or if they are. And there's just it's it ends up being this like weird brain twister and it's a ton of fun. OK, all right. I'm back in. But I'm also going to be grumpy about it the entire time. Uh, yeah. But, you know, that's just what I do anyway. <laughs> so the shipwreck <laughs> doesn't come up. I'll tell you that. What? Um, it's, I, uh, it's called that, but there's really no theme to the game. It's I'm all about shipwrecks pirate. and pirates. I can tell. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, <clears throat> uh, two things, two things. Uh, we both have new streams coming up. Um, I'm going to be doing a stream where we watch an old uh, pirate television show over on my channel, DJ Pirate Rabbits, where uh, we're going to watch the 1956 Buccaneers and discuss it and chop it up oh. and mostly make fun of it. Uh, but more importantly, I think you have a, a certain stream running that's coming up soon that people here on the Saving Throw show should get excited about. Right. Uh, I'm going to be running. Are you ready? Um, Dune, uh, the RPG that we talked about uh, about a month ago, I think, yeah. at this rate. Uh, the 2D20 game, I'm uh, We've got an amazing cast. We're going to be starting that on Tuesday nights, uh, July, I think it's July 6th. Um, and it's going for five weeks. Um, I'm really excited. We're going to do like, we're going to build a house together. We're going to build a planet, you know, uh -huh. we're going to build characters, uh, and then we're going to run them through this adventure. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty excited not just to play the game, but also to do a stream. It's part of the, the RPG exploration society that, uh, that teaches you how to play the game. Yeah. So and you, I, and you, yeah, and you, if you, you've done uh, learn to play style, uh, YouTube videos before for other games and you've 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 run games on stream before so you've you, you have a lot of experience in this so I'm really looking forward to being part of the cast on that one yeah uh, right yeah. I'm so happy you're gonna be there right we uh, team owlbear soup team up for sure yeah um we'll also let's see for f folks who have watched this show before we'll have Teos um on board um and then we also are bringing uh, fantastic folks. We have uh, Aliza Pearl, we have B Zelda, and we have Cohen Edenfield um, all coming to join us as well, which are all fantastic humans, <laughs> um, all part of the Saving Throw family, I believe. Um, I'm just, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. <laughs> uh, so we've 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 got a warning that we uh, we better not we better make sure Eric isn't in it because of one of his uh, custom Ori sandstorms. There's got to be a sandstorm. I mean, come on. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I believe Aubrey, Aubrey Cella has the right reaction to that. Uh, give us some yeah. doo-doo-doo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I just, I, I really like the game. The game is really, the system is so cool. I know we talked about it a whole yeah. bunch, but I just like the way it's set up. I like the way it initiates your character actions and the way you kind of have to describe what you're doing and why you're doing it is really important. So yeah. It's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I've been reading the the rules to just kind of familiarize myself with them. That at least at least one other person will know, have a good Please grasp do. on the rules <laughs> on the show. Uh, and I and I'm just loving the system. And yeah, I I'm really excited to play it. Uh, it could be a second system for me. Is is the two D twenty system just based on yeah. some of the stuff? If I if I if I have a story I want to tell that doesn't fit the mold of Starfinder or uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And of course, as uh, the GM for the game, uh, I love that your actions could generate threats that I get to use to make the uh, the enemies even more uh, challenging. I yeah. mean, it's uh, uh, I'm a monster when I get that kind of power, so I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. Ooh, it's going to be fun. A couple quick shout outs. Uh, thanks for the follow Dusty Denim. Uh, and yeah. I th and we got a sub just a little bit ago from Be Right Tuck. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. And uh, thanks, everyone else in the chat for coming and hanging out with us. Um, all I would like to ask you now, Rich, is um, where in the book can I find stats for sandworms? Because I'm, I'm trying to build my character ahead of time. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Be um, right, I deliberately. Thank you. Ah, right. <laughs> I deliberately, uh, when I sent the PDFs out, uh, I, I, I took some things away because uh, oh. I wanted players to be surprised. So if you're looking at that file, <laughs> I've already started meddling and no one knows it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, 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 we were joking around on, on Twitter with... Um, Oh God, uh, Mike Selinger, Mike, yeah, yeah, Mike. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now all I want to do is I want to play Earthworm Jim in the Dune universe. Oh my! Oh gosh. Okay, that would be fun. <laughs> a sandworm would be tough. Um, <laughs> this just totally reminds me of a, a game of Rifts that we ran. Uh, we were playing, you know, far future sci-fi stuff, and one of the characters decided that, or one of the players, they wanted to stop playing their character. They were bored and they wanted to start playing a highly intelligent, intelligent psychic worm. Um, and we were all like, that doesn't, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The DM didn't really like that. Um, and so one day he contacted all of the players and he was like, all right, I have a plan. Uh, we're going to work together during the next adventure to kill off my character. And when I have to bring in a new character, it'll be in a way where this worm appears in the story anyway. So I might as well get to play it. Right. Um, that day was the last day of that campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> uh, just a, a quick moral to players. Don't uh, don't team up against your DM. That's the end of the campaign. Yeah. It's <laughs> a <Yeah>. mistake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right. Uh, oh, we got a, a another subscriber. Um, there we go. Simiath Pernkoth. Pernkoth. Oh. I, 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 like... I like trying to pronounce these names, and I, I hope that I get close. Um, I know I butcher <laughs> most of them. But I hope I get close. Oh man, um, let's. Uh, I think it's time, right? It's time Are you ready? to get time to get into some news. Let's get newsy. Let's get newsy. All right. Uh, All why right. don't you kick it off? Because I have nine million windows open and I forgot where my news is. Okay, <laughs> I gotcha. Well, the first bit of news that I have is actually um, a little odd. Uh, requires some discussion. Okay. Um, the news go. is that TSR is back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 no, 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 TSR has been back. They, they released a magazine. They, mm -hmm. uh, they were ready to go for some D&D stuff or something, right? Like, like TSR, right, right. TSR has been back. Yeah, well, kind of, right? So, right, TSR is, is Tactical Studies Rules, the company that kind of made D&D eventually getting picked up by WotC as it was kind of faltering, I guess, in what is the, the second ed days. Um, and... That led to a whole bunch of stuff, sure. But uh, but TSR is a brand people wanted to bring back as kind of this way to point back to the origins of D&D &D and like, let's get original. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there was a company that restarted TSR. They're still around. Um, they popped up, I think, in 2001 and um, and basically, or 2011, there we go, uh, and launched Gygax Magazine, getting yeah. some of the Gygax folks on board. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and starting to make some stuff. And apparently the magazine was canceled after like a, a trademark thing um the gygax is backed out and currently they make the top secret rpg they're still around i think they they are tsr games um okay. 
But uh, Ernie Gygax is back with TSR Hobbies. Um, <laughs> the Wait new TSR. How many Gygax <laughs> children are there? Because how many different versions of TSR are we going to get? You know, this is this is one of the same folks. Ernie oh, was involved okay, okay. in both projects. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, so coming back and what they are doing is is trying to kind of like bring back this old school feel of D and D. So it's got art with uh, with Larry Elmore. I mean, who, oh, one wow. of the people I think about for classic D and D art. Yeah. Um, and uh, and they're just off and running with a first product called Giant Lands, uh, which is a sci-fi tabletop RPG. It has an associated theme park. Um, this was a box set that came out in 2019, and they are kind of making a limited edition box set um, that will not be made again as part of this like huge new launch for their system. Um, so the whole idea is that it is like you know sci-fi in the future. You can certainly. Um, play all sorts of different types of characters. Are you uh, a giant, um, a mutant, an android, uh, something from the multitude of worlds all crashing together uh, to reclaim the earth as their own? Um, seems kind of wild. I'm ready um, to reclaim the earth as my own. Right? So I like my that not only is me. TSR... <laughs> are you ready? You're all ready for that, I'm, right? I'm already... My, uh, my, my worm people need me. Dang it. Um, so I, I just think it's a cool concept, a cool idea. I, it's weird to see TSR back. I mean, I, I'm just so focused on D&D &D as, as wizards now, of course. And it's cool to see this TSR doing something completely different. Like, let's make a box set like the classics, right? But let's uh, let's focus on this sci-fi world instead, uh, which I think might be a lot of fun. <clears throat> yeah, that is one thing that a lot of folks have talked about, like TSR days. They talk about the box sets um, mm -hmm. and, how, and how we don't get them anymore. And it's... And yeah. in the reason, like if, if you look at Teos's site, actually, I, I think he outlines how how expensive it is to produce these box sets and how yeah. it's not a good business model. Um, Beetle and Grimm are able to do it because they're able to charge five hundred dollars for their sets. Right. right. If, if you charge five hundred dollars, you can totally get a set with like five you know, books in it with three maps and a bunch of cutouts. Right. If you want to pay those big bucks. So I'm wondering where they're going to price this at. Is it going to be like the old school prices, which I mean, for inflation, right? You know, they, they were like 30 bucks, 20 bucks sometimes. Right. And so like, say, say they're 50 bucks right now. Are they are they going to be able to make the capital that they need to, to, to continue their business? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know oh. these limited edition ones are coming out for seventy nine ninety nine. So they yeah. are okay. they're pushing it a little bit, right? Yeah. So they want to make it is a luxury object for sure. Yeah. Um, but they're they're going to put the book out at a lower rate. I'm I'm pretty sure. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so we'll see. But it's cool that something else is happening. I like more more RPGs getting out there and using TSR as like an identity is uh, pretty good for a lot of a lot of us nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 a lot of the, the grognards will definitely latch on to TSR and want to do anything they can to support it. And then there's there's mm -hmm. nerds who just like chronicling the existence of D&D &D, like Teos, who will probably get in on this for similar reasons, right? Um, yeah. I, I don't know about your your average current 5e gamer, how excited or interested they, they would be in this, um, especially if they've joined yeah. during 5e, but we'll see. I'm trying to remember who I talked to recently that mentioned that they were going to go and play some Gamma World or at least read up on it. And I was like, ah, oh, Gamma World. Right? <laughs> remember that. Yeah. Uh <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, I want to talk about something serious. And this is a very sure. serious Kickstarter. <laughs> I don't talk a lot about a lot about Kickstarters uh, because I try to avoid them. And, you, you know, that's 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 uh, that's Rich's realm. So uh, <laughs> there's this game called... Uh, coming out called Heroes of Barcadia. Uh, and this is a uh, drinking game in which you play, you have a, a, a pint glass and you, you create a, uh, a dungeon and, in, 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 and you get to be these heroes and it's just a drinking game. And they do say you don't have to use alcohol for it, which is oh, yeah, fine. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but there's two things that I really, really like about this. Uh, one, all of the pieces are waterproof. So yep. if, if good, you look up, good plan. <laughs> exactly right. That's something really small. And I don't think a lot of the other drinking games have really like some of the cards have been just regular cards. Everything in here is waterproof. Uh, you can dump it all in a, a, a jug apparently or something. That's what they show on their Kickstarter. Anyway, the yeah. other thing is, is like, I really want to back this specifically for, because I love the, uh, health bar straw set. Um, 
I I love that even more than the pint glasses that have the the health bars on oh. them. I think these these are genius. These are fun. Uh, these are things you could get like several sets of, and you could mail them to your friends, uh, and and you could play over the internet because on top of all of that, they are uh, putting out a roll twenty version of this game. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so you I mean can, that makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah so so you can, you can play with your friends across the internet. Um, I, for one, will probably uh, back this and see if I can gather a group of my friends and, and stream at least one episode of, of us playing it. And I, you know, and I think it'll right. be it'll be wonderful. So it's it's a game that sounds really silly and I really like it. I love the idea of using those those glasses as the your your player tokens moving around if you're doing it in real life. And you've got those those fantastic like hex coaster style Um map tiles like it just looks like a lot of fun it really does. um you sent me this and i was surprised immediately because the folks who are creating this are some of the folks that i met working with think geek um i don't know at this point like seven or eight years ago um so folks who are excited about making big quality cool interesting products and designs uh and this this feels like a natural evolution of that like this is a fun experience it, it looks great bright colors good product um yeah. Yeah. Not bad. And Sweet. it's already at about five or over 500,000. So certainly being created. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. We're, we're good here. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, it's a fun team. I'm pretty excited to see this, this happening. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you got next? Well, that was super serious. Oh my goodness. Um, well, I'll go with super serious as well then. Cause they've announced, um, that uh, the during D and D Live, which is coming up in mid July this year, D and D Live this year is being brought uh, put on by G Four, so a different kind of feel than maybe the D and D Live from the last couple of years. Um, and they have uh, have stretched uh, stretched out, reached out a little bit to some different stars for the Lost Odyssey Last Light, um, a live game featuring dragons, krakens, and giant sea queens. Kate Welch is going to be on board to DM this game, and the celebrity guests are just like little-known figures who maybe you know. Um, Jack Black, Reggie Watts, Kevin Smith, Jason Mewes, Lauren Lapkus, uh, and a mystery guest. <laughs> I'm really excited about, you know, that, like Jack Black is the one that really like jumped. Uh, like I was like, whoa, Jack Black. Mm -hmm. But then when I read Reggie Watts was on here, I, uh -huh. I, I really, uh, now I'm, now I'm, now I have to see, I, I'm going to have to at least watch clips of it if I don't watch the entire thing. So, right. And I, I really like Lauren Lapkus. So I'm, I'm kind of excited for all of the stuff that's going to be happening. It's going to be a really silly game. It feels like I love that. It's got this very serious title and it's not heroes of Barcadia because it could be <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh man. Yeah. So that should be some silly fun. I mean, I'm, I'm really curious. I don't know much about what D and D live will be like next month, but I know they're going to announce some books we've talked about already. They'll have mm -hmm. this, this fun, silly game. So it should be good. Nice. Um, I got some news from Paizo. Uh, Paizo uh, for PAX Online 2021. Uh, GM registration opens on June 17th. Uh, the schedule will be posted, on, which was three days ago, so get on it. The Warhorn schedule is now posted. Uh, let's see here. Um, GM Warhorn signups begin today uh, in a half an hour. So uh, get on that. <laughs> uh, player signups begin on June 26th at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, then, yeah, the, you know, uh, they call tables on the 4th and they do another calling of tables on the 11th. So get in, get signed up, get ready for mm -hmm. for that. Uh, they're also uh, they haven't announced when the GM registration link will be open or the GM registration link is open for Gen Con Online. Uh, the spreadsheet and everything will be posted later. And for PAX Unplugged, uh, you're going to have to reach out to the folks who are involved with it. Uh, that's going to be a 2022, um, but we're not sure. Oh, wait. Oh, they will not be attending PAX Unplugged. However, there are going to be some folks there running Paizo stuff. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I misread well, cool. that first time I read it. Um, yeah. Well, no. So more convention updates for everyone um yeah and then uh what you got over there buddy that's exciting i i like that i want more i'm ready for conventions yeah. um 
I, uh, well, I, I think this will be my, my last one is about another Kickstarter, um, which I've been kind of curious about for little bits, but it took me a, some time to figure out how the game worked and see what was going on. Um, this is a Kickstarter for a new um, fantasy RPG system called Mazes. Um, fantasy role-playing reforged is what they're calling it. And again, they want to get that like classic feel back. Feels like 1979 plays like 2021. Uh which is interesting. Uh, yeah. This game looks very simple. They're, they're polymorph system. Uh, and the more I look at it, the more like nuanced and interesting it really is. Um, are you ready? Are you yeah. ready for this? Bring it. Bring okay. it. Okay. I'm ready. So in order to play this game, you must pick a die, uh, a D4, D6, D8, or D10. That die also determines your character class. Okay. okay. So... <laughs> um, they have this chart and it's it's on their Kickstarter page if you are checking this out. Um, basically, the, the way it works is whenever you want to do things, you're looking to roll specific things on your die. So um, if I am a, a D4, I'm the paragon. I'm a, I'm a thinker. I'm a talker. Um, I'm good at resolving social and mental puzzles, uh, creating spells. I'm not so good at being like super strong, right? right. Um, if I want to succeed at a bones check on my die, that's that's your like toughness mm -hmm. check. Okay. You have to roll a five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Which means as a paragon, I'm not doing that. That's not right. my deal. <laughs> um, uh, even the Vanguard, who is kind of like the, the quick moving, the D6, that's only a five or six, only a one third chance to succeed on that. But our fighter and our sentinel are getting much better chances to succeed at these these bones checks because they're tough, right? Right. Um, meanwhile, if you want to succeed at a books check, you have to roll a two or a three. So our paragon with only a D4 to roll, it's a 50% chance to succeed on those. And our, you know, our D10 um, friend over here, the sentinel, is going to have a very rough time solving that problem. So they they did this very strange and cool thing with just just deciding, not like if you roll higher than something, you're succeeding. You have to roll these very specific numbers on your dice in order to succeed at these checks. Um, and it's a little bit more than that as well because um, there are also crits and, uh, well, darker moments, I suppose. Um, <laughs> the anti-crits. The anti-crits, and it, it kind of depends. Um, Oh my gosh, where the heck did it go? I just lost my page. Um, basically, uh, if you roll a one on your die, right? A one is great. Uh, a one is a key and a key can do all sorts of fantastic things. Um, it is a good, good, good thing. Um, a crown, which is when you roll your maximum, can be good. Kind of depends on uh, how much you've all screwed up in this adventure. Um, <laughs> like, uh, It's basically, it's uh, crowns are good if the world is light which means you, you've been very careful and cautious. Mm -hmm. But if you're running around making tons of noise and uh, and things are probably going to hear you coming, then a crown is bad. It is darkness. Okay. It is is it bad news. So um, it's, it's a very cool and simple system that I actually really, really like a lot. You have a single die, and whenever you want to do something, you have to roll it and check this, see what number you rolled, check the chart, you're done. That's the game. Oh, um, I think it sounds fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Um, and I really want to play a, a D4 because all I want to do is look at books and then roll crits, right? <laughs> <laughs> Got a 50% chance to get a one or a four. Like, that's amazing. Key so, or crown. <laughs> so you want to play yourself in an RPG. Got it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Books and crits. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So uh, I have more announcements uh, from Paizo. This one is the Pathfinder Arena update. So um, so the, the folks at... Oh, man. Giachi Un uh, Unity uh, have an update on the Pathfinder Arena board game. So there's a draft rule book ready. Uh, looks like you can just use your Pathfinder minis. It is uh, being crowdfunded or it was crowdfunded. Uh, now it's ready to play test, I guess. So uh, yeah, if you just go to Paizo's site or just look it up, you'll be very easily able to find it. And then, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I think it's 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 gonna be interesting. You pick a hero, yeah, and there's arena battles, which which is a ton of fun. So, mm -hmm. and I love it. Like it's gonna have that like old school hero quest vibe. I mean, it's gonna be way better than that. But I love these kind of games. Like yeah. pick your mini, move around a board, fight some minis. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Tactical <Okay>. fighting. <laughs> All right, and then you said you had one more before we uh, jump into our quick review. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I, I suppose I do. I mean, the last one is just really quick. I wanted to chat about uh, the DMs challenge, right? Uh, we talked about this a little yeah. bit last week. It is, um, it's done. It's over. Oh, right it's over. Now. It, ended, it ended at noon today. Oh, um, crap. Basically, uh, folks had three days, um, and that's it, in order to live, like create your, your best version of the challenge that they presented to you. You're going to send it in. People find out within a month what the 10 finalists are going to be. Um, it, it was wild. Like I looked at it and I was like, I, I had written a one page adventure um, the day before I'd done a bunch of things. I thought I was ready for this. And they announced that it would be RPG superstar was right. A magic item. Yeah. Um, they announced it would be create a complex trap uh, <laughs> and complex traps show up in the Xanathar's book. Uh, they're intended to be traps that are an entire encounter. Yeah. Um, I've I I have never seen one in a book before um, or in an adventure because there's three examples in um, in Xanathar's guide and they're all just ridiculous. They're all huge. Like um, you're walking down. One of them is like a staircase to the doorway at the bottom. And when you close the door above or something, two portals pop open and this huge like Indiana Jones style boulder goes rolling down. Right. So you're dodging out of the way. But it gets to the bottom and it just pops back up at the top again, like continues. So it goes faster and faster oh, as man. you're trying to move through this space. Um, it acts on like initiative count 10, but as it gets fast enough, it's 10 and 20. The amount of damage it does, if it can't dodge out of the way, increases as well. It's pretty wild. Um, and uh, and then there's a door at the bottom that you need to get through. And it takes you like multiple tries in order to open that door. So it's... Uh, it's meant to be a challenge for everyone. There's lots of damage being dealt. It's not just like, oh, there's a pit. Um, cool. I jump over it, yeah. which is how yeah. I think about traps usually. This is like a trap encounter, which yeah. is crazy. <laughs> That's wild. I designed, I, uh, I sadly finished designing mine this morning. I didn't realize that it would no. go so quickly. So uh, I will have to participate next year, and I will be rooting <laughs> you on, Rich, instead of, okay. instead of trying to... Uh, uh scoop you on it fair enough fair <laughs> enough well, yeah <laughs> just don't let me know what's happening um the thing we did find out is that uh they they had no idea how many people would be participating and so the note that you get after you you submit your entry is um we may only be able to like check out a couple of the you know we'll, we'll take them in the order that they come and as soon as we got our 10 we're, we're good so some of the entries won't even be looked at so oh, man all right who knows well, well let's uh but let's... it should be fun yeah yeah let's let's take a let's Ooh. take let's jump to reviews are you well I, <laughs> as i say are you ready i just thrust us you into just it. did it i just did it uh absolutely uh i took a look at the uh D, D clue from uh from the op games our friends who uh who sent us some uh some copies of these to take a look at and this was exciting this is this is out of the four that i received recently this is the the last one i was like well it's gonna be clue it's gonna be D, &D themed and that's cool and then i yeah. kind of just let it sit right? right um um how many times have you played clue i mean bajillions okay All like right. like Good. we're on the it, same page it, it was one of those <laughs> games like they they had in school and anytime there was a chance to play board games instead of schoolwork, i was all about it so we played Clue uh -huh. a lot yeah. Gotcha. Um, uh, when I was in college, I started playing Clue with our, our gaming club, and there were some folks there who would bring graph paper. And I was like, what are you doing? And they're, they're like, well, we want to make basically this like 3D representation. We want to know what every person, whenever you like ask everyone a question, I want to make notes about that, what you asked, which things you asked about, and like, yes, or, you know, who responded, and this huge, ridiculous chart. And we got super into Clue. Um, yeah. And then we discovered Mystery at the Abbey, which for me was just an upgrade of uh, a game in a you know logical level. And I just moved on and played that one instead. Uh, I love that game. It's great. It gives you a lot of special powers, rooms that will do different things, give you new options and new ways to play. Um, so when I started looking at this game, I was like, well, what's it going to be like? And it's like they gave you a lot of options and different ways to play. Oh. And I really, really like it. <laughs> so if I were to play Clue, this would be the version I play. Okay. Um, a lot of the stuff is pretty similar, right? So we've got our board, we've got our town here. Um, this is based on, um, oh my gosh, uh, Baldur's Gate, the right? true Avernus, uh, 
Baldur's Gate and Avernus, yeah, kind of mixed together, right? It's, you're, you're, I think you're up at the top still. Um, you've got a list of suspects that are all from that adventure, and you've got a, some weapons that are part of the whole thing, right? Um, in this one, the uh, the puzzle box has arrived in town, and one of the these demons has taken over your one of the adventurers in your party and is now pretending to be them. So you were all a member of the party. You don't know which one has been taken over. That's kind of the deal. Um, you need to figure out which was the the weapon that took out your adventuring friend, and then you need to find the location where the puzzle box is hidden, right? Yeah. Clue stuff, you know, all the ways you think it's going to work. Um, but, uh, right, we've got here, like, the villa. We see little Kalimshan over here, the Dungeon of the Dead. We've got our secret passages to the other corner of the board, like classic movement stuff. Mm -hmm. um, here's our characters and... I, well, I mean, I recognize Minsk and Boo, of course, from yeah. uh, the Baldur's Gate series. We've got Lulu, champion of uh, of D and D right now. It feels like um, I don't know enough about the adventure to know the other four, but I would like to become good friends with Slobber Chops. Yeah, Slo <laughs> Slobber Chops uh, is now my favorite uh, cat with wings ever. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> So you you pick your character, uh, you put it on the board, you wander around, um, you do the thing that you expect to do out of Clue, right? Yeah. Um, you, uh, you ask people questions, um, trying to see their cards in order to figure out which three cards were left in the envelope, right? The whole deal. But this game adds much more. Um, it adds power cards. Uh, power each of your cards. characters, I think this is the next slide here, uh, each of your characters um, has a special ability that you can use once a game. So you want to be pretty careful about this. Uh, you don't want to get too much, but uh, but like, um, oh, I can't remember who green is. Uh, their ability is once per game, you can move to any room that does not have a secret passage. You can just hop around the board. Um, uh, set up a couple rumors. Intriguing, intriguing. Um, I think Lulu's is once per game, you may start a rumor using a room you are not in but the suspect is still moved into that spot, right? So there's still all the moving around and all the stuff that you're used to. Um, you've got your powers, that's already neat. So now your characters are distinct. There's also intrigue cards in the game. And every time what? someone suspects you, like you get drawn yeah. to a room, uh -huh. um, you get to draw an intrigue card for your trouble. Um, if you land on, there's a couple question marks on the board. Um, mm -hmm. You get to draw an intrigue card, Ooh. and one of one of the six sided dice, the the one pip is a question mark. And whenever you roll that, you also get an intrigue card. Wow. Many of those cards are good. Um, I think I got a couple of them up here pretty quick. Um, oh, oh, well, oh there, yep. look at there's some Stenny's. folks. Hang on. Oh, see, I just I just like the pieces. We got all our little weapons here. You get little you know the things you want you get your notepad which is is as useful as 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 you make it um there we go the entry cards because this is a big deal um these cards that you draw don't always work oh. <laughs> but basically oh, yeah. you get to play them and then roll a die to see if they will activate or not um but if they do they they do pretty powerful stuff the cults of the absolute roll a five or better and uh and you loot a crystal ball you can just look at one card you pick from another player's hand it's awesome oh, wow. stuff um an anonymous tip, you go investigate, roll the die twice and move that number of spaces, right? Extra movements, the swarm of imps um, is also giving you extra movement, just a lot more. There's a, there's a bunch of them in the game, but some of the intrigue cards are not intrigue cards. They're instead the devil Zariel. Um, no! If you draw one of these, you just put it beneath the board so that you know how many have been drawn. Um, if you are the player that draws the eighth card, Zariel destroys you. You have been captured and you are out of the game. Um, you can no longer move around or ask questions. I think you can still answer questions so the game can continue, but you are out. Um, and even worse, you take that eighth card and you put it back into the deck. And so the <laughs> next person who draws it, everyone can lose this game. Zariel can win. <laughs> well, I mean... I think based on what I know about that adventure, <laughs> yeah, Zariel right. can win. <laughs> yeah. So, so I love that they, they go through all this, this effort, right? You, uh, you, you know, you decide you're going to guess you get it wrong. You're out of the game, but you're still like around answering questions, you know, but, uh, but everyone else just by playing the game can lose. Just if you, you know, you roll dice, you have to draw an intrigue card. You know, someone questions you, gosh, you're going to keep getting those intrigue cards. <laughs> 
I can just tank you if I want to, Justin, just what? by suspecting you again and again and again until you draw that last card. Uh, <laughs> that is brutal. Yeah. So, uh, so it's a wild game. I'm kind of interested, I think this is the last uh, slide I, I made for it, but it's a cool game. Nice. I like the pieces for it. The components are great. Um, and I love these additions that make it a little bit more than just the clue that I remember. They give it some, you know, some strange tactics, some cool abilities, which a game like this really, I think, needs, you know? Um, uh, if I'm stuck, if I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just moving across the middle of the map, like trying to see what's up, I should go for one of those question marks. I should get an intrigue card and see if that'll give me a boost, you know, some way to get ahead of everybody else, uh, which Clue itself doesn't really do. You just have to get lucky and you have to be good at deduction. And uh, in this game, by by adding this random element, I think really opens it up and makes it a lot more fun. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. That's, unexpected yeah. but i like it <laughs> i i i i really do like the the changes they made to the game um oh and actually there was one thing i kind of wanted to look at a little bit more because we kind of breezed over it just a little bit uh the 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 items in which the murder could have been done i like this i like the longbow the great sword the sensor yeah. of remembrance interesting right we've got a horn of blasting there um the Mastercraft Scimitar and Silver Claw. Silver which, uh, Claw. That was I assume cool. are all objects you get from the adventure in those early stages. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and I, uh, I, I, you know, I wish we knew somebody who worked on, on, on Descent into Avernus, but sadly, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, I do, I do really enjoy the, the, the fact that they've taken Clue and they've they've kind of turned it on its head a little bit so that we we get a very different feel um yeah. all right it's not quite aggressive but it could be you could play it aggressively if you wanted to you could take minsk and boo down <laughs> exactly right all right uh let's see if i can do one more thing we wanted to do before we get to our guest is we wanted to talk oh, about yeah. Let's see. All right, guys, we're going to watch me do this live. I'm going to try to set up the scene. Uh, did I lose that link? Oh, I probably did. There oh, no. Oh, found no. It. Found it. All right. Let's do this live. We can let's make sure there's nothing uh, personal on my screen. So let's go to a screen share. There we go. Ah, I can block <laughs> we're all every, the You're everywhere. This. Yeah. <laughs> block all the personal with this here. We'll move Rich. We'll move Rich over here. And we'll Whoa. make him smaller, and then we'll move me over Whoa. here and make me bigger, and we'll get rid of our names. There we go. Look okay. at that. Making scenes live, everybody. That's that's how you do it. So we wanted to... You're a wizard. <laughs> speaking of wizards, we wanted to really quick uh, go through and give quick rankings of the uh, the UA subclasses of Mages of uh, Strixhaven, uh, just to kind of wrap everything up and, and, and decide how we feel about these. Yeah, so, we went through them for a while last week. Uh, we kind of skimped, I think, on the very last one because we were out of time, uh, which is fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we wanted to do an overview and just kind of kind of give our, our final thoughts on that. So um, good. No one's given this uh, tier list that I just made a minute ago uh, a poop emoji. Um, <laughs> please don't do it, Justin. <laughs> um, dang it. <laughs> dang it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so what do you think? Uh, let's let's go through these kind of in order and just yeah. kind of chat about what we thought about them, um, these UAs, and and uh, yeah, uh, we start with Mage of Lorehold. This was the one we had where you get a lot of um, right. We're focused on underlying and driving history here. There's a lot of scholars, things like that. You get an ancient companion. Mm -hmm. um, you get to choose what type of companion that is. It could be a healer, a sage, or a warrior, and that gives you quite a few benefits uh, depending on which one you pick. Yeah, um, and and I and I remember that one being being pretty interesting, but I don't remember it feeling super strong. Um, and I, right. It, to, you know, to 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 even talk about that a little bit more, I don't think any of these are going to be S tier, and mm -hmm. that is because the uh, you know so someone like the sorcerer is going to lose out, right? So regardless, some some classes are going to lose out on one of these abilities. So I don't think any of them can be S tier unless they come up with a way to you know, uh, adjust that. So, yeah, yeah. um, I think at best, honestly, I think, uh, lore hold, I want to put it in B. I think it's B. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a automatic. Let's go get it. But I think right. it's solid. 
I think it can make a very powerful warrior uh -huh. um, with some magical abilities. And that's how I would play it as kind of like a Gish style. Yeah. Um, and it could be fun. I would love to play a warrior with spirit guardians. So once we get to about fifth level, mm -hmm. uh, I would enjoy this a lot. But yeah, I agree. But do you probably think... be. Okay. Uh, so the major Prismari, Prismari is, is the school that deals with elementals uh, in the Magic the Gathering game. They're red and blue. Uh, and they had some interesting powers. I don't, I don't have it mm -hmm. up right now. Um, so I'm going to rely uh, on your, your, your remember reminders. Right. One of their big ones was they had kinetic artistry. So they could mm -hmm. dash as a bonus action. And when they dash elements come with them, right? So this That's boreal right. yeah. sweep, icy waters or scorching, um, or a thunderlight jaunt where you don't provoke attacks of opportunity. Um, there was some really, really good stuff in there. Um, there was also favored medium where you pick like fire, you gain resistance to fire, which mm -hmm. is awesome. And whenever you cast a fire spell, um, uh, you can choose other people around you to get resistance. So there was like some cool effects and abilities in there kind of at lower levels. Um, at higher levels, it got wild at 14th level. Um, you gain proficiency and dexterity saving throws. And whenever you make one, if you roll a nine or less, you just count it as a 10. Yeah. Um, and this so one I remember thinking well. was really strong, uh, really interesting. So I, I'm I'm tempted to put this in A, unless you have another. I agree. Okay. No, I thought that one was good. That ability dashes a bonus action and cool stuff happens. I would do that every single turn, easily. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the mages of Quandrix, they are blue and green. They're the, uh, the nerdy mages. So they're the ones mm -hmm. who... Uh, do a lot of, you know, book, yeah, they're pretty nerdy. They do a lot of book learning. They do a lot of math specifically. So yes. uh, they deal with fractals. Uh, they have these fractal creatures that are their, uh, their, their, their emblem, their, their creature in mm -hmm. Magic the Gathering. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and here that came through with, uh, with some meddling abilities, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Diminishing function, supplemental function, basically they can uh, give people kind of like a bardic inspiration or de-inspiration, yeah. uh, however you like. Um, a lot of forcing people to get re-rolls or, or bonuses, things like that. Um, null equation, I think was its big one at 10th level. Um, oh yes, that's right. Um, you, you point at someone after they get damage, right? And that creature suddenly um, only deals half damage on weapon attacks as disadvantage on saving throws. It's pretty wild. Um, I feel an A tier here. I think so. Um, being a meddler is fun. Being a debuffer is great. I really enjoy it. And I don't, I want a good one. And this one yeah. feels pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, and then for Mage of Silver Quill, they're black, they're white. Uh, they're the mages that deal with uh, more of the power of words, right? So these mm -hmm. are the folks that you would anticipate using things like Power Word Kill, uh, that type of stuff. Uh, they are uh, quick talkers uh, in the school themselves. They're, uh, they, they, they tend to produce like the most politician type style of folks, as well as like the most bullies and things along those lines as well. Um, yeah. So tell us a little right. bit about Silver Quill. I'm trying to remember all the bits of this one. Um, yeah, a lot of talky, so they got a lot of proficiencies instead of bonus spells. Uh, one of their cool abilities at sixth level was the Inky Shroud. They can create darkness that they can see through. And mm -hmm. uh, whenever other creatures start their turn in the darkness, you can deal 2d10 psychic damage to them. So it's yeah. your darkness spell is, is very cool. Um, but at higher levels, I think at 10th, again, like this was this awesome moment, your spells that deal damage, you can add words of power to make it either do psychic or radiant damage. And if you choose psychic and they fail their saves, they're also frightened of you and radiant makes people charmed by you. So a lot of power here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to put Mage of Silverquare in A tier. And I remember a lot about Mage of Witherbloom. So Witherbloom mm -hmm. is the one that deals with death and dying. Uh, they deal with a lot of necrotic and healing energies, that type of stuff. Um, and it shows up in their powers. And I remember Mage of uh, Witherbloom being being pretty powerful. Uh, I, and, yes. and this is how I remember things kind of lining up in my head, where Mage of Lorehold was fun, but it just wasn't eight, or it wasn't A tier. Well, I got to go back because I knew there was something just getting at me, which is their 10th level ability. Um, once per turn, when a creature you can see hits with an attack roll, you can do this a few times up to your react or proficiency bonus. Um, you can use your reaction to force them to make a saving throw against your spell save DC. On a failure, the target becomes vulnerable to one of the damage types dealt by the attack. Yep. yep. Yeah. So Brutal. that was a big lore hold ability, um, was to basically give everybody the ability to deal double damage um, for one round. So 
I think Lorehold maybe is is the weakest of them all, but I also like it because you get a companion. You yeah. know, you get a lot of choices in there. So if we looked at this and we said everybody was A tier, I would be on board with that. Um, okay. But I think uh, Lorehold may be the, the weaker of the five. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, um, speaking of mages filled with knowledge, uh, I believe where our guest is ready. So, uh, Rich, why don't okay. you take a break? And I'm going to go uh, yap at, uh, at, at our friend Sean Merwin here for a little bit. <laughs> Hello and uh, welcome to the show, Sean. Let's make sure I have all your stuff on. And I just want to introduce you real quick. Sean Murren, I've known Sean for, you know, decades, maybe billions of years now. Um, he is a very accomplished author on the DMs Guild with over 58 items, a credit to him. He has written for Living Greyhawk, Living Forgotten Realms, The Adventurers Guild, Sendrick Expedition, Ashes of Athos, uh, Living Kingdoms of Calamar, uh, Star Trek Adventures, I believe Star Wars D20. Uh, he was the co-lead designer on Acquisitions Inc. He was a designer on Avernus and so many more things. Uh, recently part of a successful Kickstarter with Ghostfire Gaming, Grim Hollow. And he is the, uh, he's actually the original half of the Down With D&D podcast, which is now the Mastering Dungeons podcast on the uh, Misdirected Mark Network with a uh, friend of the show, Teos. Welcome to the show, Sean. Wow, I didn't know if I was going to get a chance to talk there. It, well, I mean, around <laughs> me, it's it's always hit or miss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was waiting for Rich to come up. I'm like, well, I may get a word in, but no, it was you. So no, no, no. Yeah, you just had to you just had to deal with me running my mouth for however long I just ran my mouth, like six hours or so. No, that was that was a great introduction. Thank you. Sometimes <laughs> I get an introduction like that, and I'm like, oh yes, I did do that, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I you know I remember the first time we talked it was uh, when I was doing the Going Last podcast. And right. uh, afterwards, you, you you sent me all these Star Wars adventures you had written, and I was I was very pleased with that as well. Yeah, I yeah I like to have people read what what I've written. So yeah, uh, <laughs> if I didn't write it, I'll just pretend I did and send it to you. Oh, perfect. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those uh, you know the the the, the expanse novels that you've written have been fantastic. I really yeah, enjoyed I, The I, Hobbit too. You did a really good job on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my time machine served me well on that one. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, just kind of kick it off. Um, we Most of us know you from D&D stuff. Uh, you know, we've mm -hmm. played your adventures. You've written forever in, in, in various living campaigns. Um, and and you're continuing to do so. How How do you feel about, like, or, or sorry, uh, which of those li living campaigns, the ones that have kind of trickled off, this is, this is interesting to me for reasons, and we'll, we'll get into it, uh, that okay. has kind of trickled off that you wish had stuck around a little bit longer. Like, you know, maybe oh. at least one more season or, or, you know, like, you know, one more batch of adventures just to kind of tie things up. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen Zendrick Expeditions, mm -hmm. uh, which was a third edition campaign set in Eberron. And it it had the unfortunate uh, distinction of running up against Living Greyhawk. Mm. And so, you know, Living Greyhawk was such a beast and it just ground through players and, mm -hmm. and just was so attractive to everyone that when they set up, when Wizards of the Coast set up this alternate campaign, I was very excited because I was thinking all the cool things we could do and the different stories we could tell. And it was a much different campaign than the living Greyhawk, obviously. And it, and as with certain new things coming to four people who are in an established relationship with a game yeah. said, why would we bother with that? Mm -hmm. And so it was fun to, to experiment with that new system. And it was fun to tell stories in Keith Baker's world. And uh, it, it was really awesome, but it just never picked up the, the player base that it would have if it had come out as something separate from, you know, a, a living Greyhawk adjacent campaign. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I got to work with some really cool people and we, we told some really fun stories in that campaign. Yeah, I, 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 I wasn't a player at the time, but that's another thing that I've gone back and I've, I've read some of those adventures. And yeah, it, I've loved Centric. I've loved everything kind of around it. And honestly, looking at, at some of these things, aside from Ashes of Athos, of course, uh, you know, I, I, I would have liked to have seen more of Zendrick, uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Ashes of Athos, we both worked on that. Uh, yeah. I, I cranked out a couple of adventures and, and you, you, you manned, helped man the whole thing, right? 
I didn't man the whole thing. I was sort of on the sidelines at that point. Uh, okay. Teos would come to me occasionally and say, hey, what do you think about this? But I did write uh, a couple of adventures that helped play test adventures and, yeah. and things of that nature. And that was, you know, another another campaign that was separate from the big campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Ashes of Athos was different enough and had its own sort of fandom that it it was going to succeed no matter what yeah. and they put together an incredible uh array of adventures and mm -hmm. a, an amazing story and i know that to this day they're still sending it out many many times a month yeah. to people who are you know even though it's a fourth edition campaign people are like hey could i get that and, and uh, bald man games is able to send it out so yeah that's great yeah yeah definitely if you if you're interested in dark sun those were some fantastically written adventures mm -hmm. some fa fun adventures to play um and you can pretty easily convert them over to to uh you know fifth edition if you'd like um and that campaign did some really cool things with like certs and death certs and that type of stuff um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we haven't really seen a lot of that in, in other campaigns. Um, is there anything like that, that you would bring into, you know, you're working currently with, with, uh, um, adventures league, uh, but also, you know, there was some talk of some grim hollow adventures. Is there talk of organized play? So I'm hitting you with two things, organized play for okay. grim hollow. Uh, if you were going to add anything like that into adventures league, what would you do? Okay, let me try to unpack that. Uh, yeah. Organized organize play is is wonderful. It's how I cut my teeth in this industry mm -hmm. for years and years. So there's a lot to learn and it's a lot of fun, but it is also problematic in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is a marketing vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so with marketing comes costs. So you always have to weigh the cost versus the benefits that you're getting out of it. So while I would love to have a Grim Hollow organized play system or a series of adventures, uh, it's it's on my list, but it's not in planning stages yet. Let's okay. put it that way. Yeah. Uh, but that said, uh, based on the audience that you're looking for and based on the scope that you're reaching for, you want to adjust things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to go back to Ashes of Athos as an example, you know that was set in Dark Sun, yeah. so there were very specific character creation rules, such as no clerics, right, <laughs> being Dark Sun, mm -hmm. and so new players would come and they wouldn't really understand the distinction. So you'd sit down at a table, maybe you're DMing or playing, and there's like four paladins and a cleric, uh, and and they obviously haven't read the character creation rules for that specific campaign. So, right. Instantly you are, uh, it's, it's problematic right from the start to, to limit it, but it also, you can tell a better story when you do limit it. Yeah. So that's one, one of the dials that you might need to turn. Yeah. Uh, what a living campaign that I'm very fond of was the, uh, not ashes of Athos, although I was, yeah. uh, the Oracle of war campaign, okay. which came out very recently for fifth edition, which mm -hmm. I worked on with Will Doyle. Okay. And that was again, another campaign that was going to run concurrently with the main campaign, but we tried to do things differently to reach a different audience, tell a different kind of story and so on. And I really liked the limited scope of that. So it's, it's as much an adventure path that is, as it is a, a matrix based living campaign where you can just play anything, but it's easier to put out content. It's easier to make sure characters are in the same realm of uh, power as mm -hmm. other characters, it's because let's be honest, if you sit down in an adventures league adventure, you could sit down with a first level character at a table and be playing with a fourth level character that because of trading rules has a staff of power, right? Yeah. You know, something um, something amazing like that and that can hurt the experience for certain players yeah so to to create a campaign that works for everyone and that where everyone feels like they're contributing to the story you may want to create a more limited campaign so that would be my first focus would be what do we want the play experience to be like not mm -hmm. just within the adventures but between the adventures yeah and how do we build it to make that experience shine through for for all players yeah you and and, and, you, and you touched on something and, and that's that's related to this when we you mentioned grim hollow uh you mentioned the marketing you know in 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 the audience you're marketing for 
Um, who's the target audience for Grim Hollow, and did that have any effect on 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 how you 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 designed uh, the product? Okay, well, the Grim Hollow was the the first book of Grim Hollow was already out before I started with uh, with Ghostfire. Okay, but one of the things that attracted me to working with them was that I really loved that book. That was the Grim Hollow campaign guide. Oh, gotcha. And what it did was it it wants to tell a dark fantasy, you know, grim dark sort of story with with your campaign. Mm -hmm. And so you get into things like curses, not just the bestow curse spell, which is sort of weak and, and you know, it's, yeah. it is what it is, but to actually make curses that mean something, mm -hmm. mean something both mechanically and story-wise, uh, they have transformation. So one of the things that players love is, oh, I got bit by a werewolf. Oh, I want to play a werewolf, mm -hmm. right? Which is, can be unbalancing in certain ways. Yeah. So what Grim Hollow does is it takes those things and adds a layer of gameplay to them that lets you do it without becoming horribly broken. Right. There, there isn't there is an uptick in power, mm -hmm. but there's also offsets for for that. So I, I love that they did that. They did that with liches. They did that with specters. They did that with a whole bunch of things. So you know, seeing that book and seeing that. Uh, that ethos that they were going for and how well they did it uh, made me want to sign on with that company. Yeah. So uh, when I came on board in January of this year, um, they were mostly finished with the player's guide. Okay. So my first job was sort of to help finish up the player's guide, mm -hmm. which had you know more spells, more races, more transformations, more spells, all that. Yeah. And then we immediately kicked off the Grim Hollow Monster Grimoire, mm -hmm. which was the you know the monster book, yeah. which is the kick the Kickstarter did fairly well, uh, one point six five million. So yeah. you know, that, yeah. obviously there's there's an audience out there that's interested in such things. Yeah, and so that's that's what I'm working on right now. Oh, and that's amazing. Yeah, more of the same though, right? It's you know looking at monsters that are darker, looking at mm -hmm. monsters that are a little more powerful maybe or a little bit harder to kill mm -hmm. because on the player side they've also got a little more power based on the advanced backgrounds and the other things that uh the player's guide and the campaign guide introduced oh, so nice. yeah the, the vampire it's not going to be your typical vampire which oh we'll just kill it and cast this one spell and then stake through the heart and we're done no we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna change things up a little bit we're yeah. gonna make the players feel like they're in this world where they're in over their head sure. and uh and another thing that we're working on for the monster book is a salvage system Ooh. so rather than just having wizards everywhere making magic items you're gonna have to work to get what you want oh. so maybe you kill kill a monster and it doesn't have any treasure but you know it's talons if they're worked in a certain way can be made into magical weapons mm -hmm. so are you going to take the time to do that? Are you going to pay the price for the other components to get that? Now, but maybe that's the perfect weapon to kill this other kind of monster. Right. So, oh, if we know that, we'll hunt this monster first, kill it, get its talons to go after that monster. So that sort of story built into the monsters uh, is something that we were shooting for as well. Oh, that's 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 really awesome. Um, you know, and, and that's something that I've always seen in like you know various home games is is some kind of system of oh hey you just killed a griffin you know with those griffin feathers you can do this, but but right. codifying it I think feels really well in a a a very dark setting too. Yeah, and it it reinforces this idea that you're in over your head mm -hmm. and no one else is going to find these answers for you. It's all up to you. And you have to use these skills that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you, oh, alchemists. I don't care that I have proficiency with alchemist tools. Well, now you do, because unless you know an alchemist or you are proficient with alchemist tools, you're going to be in trouble. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, so someone who say is new to 5e, uh, you know, a lot of times whenever uh, they approach campaigns, uh, you know, the grim dark campaigns tend to be a little bit more, uh, more intermediate and advanced. Like, it, mm -hmm. it, at least in my experience playing playing various games it always seems the darker it is the little more 
uh, you know, in depth you have to get with the, or not in depth, but a little more punishing the rules are. Is that true right. of, of Grim Hollow as well? Is this more for your intermediate advanced gamers? Uh, or at least if there is new gamers, someone to help them along so that they don't just, you know, immediately turn to dust. I would say that at lower levels, it really isn't any different than, okay. than a regular D and D campaign. But as that learning takes place, the power level also curves up. Yeah. So hopefully it's, it's being taught at the same pace as the power level increases. Nice. And then, so are you, are you know, we, we've talked about some really awesome monsters. Are you designing like lower level, like easier level, like mm -hmm. one to five monsters too? Like what, what are some of the things you're looking at, at, as, as lower level, you know, creepy, creepy crawlers? Yeah. It's, it's like any other monster book in that sense, we've covered the, the, the spectrum. Okay. So, you know, rather than having just wolves, we're mm -hmm. going to give you a wolf with a twist, you yeah. know, rather than having just, goblins there's going to be creek goblin like creatures but with a twist mm -hmm. uh so it th there's no you know it, it's a book that you could easily pick up and use in your own home campaigns uh th there there is lore the world uh of grim hollow is called etheris mm -hmm. so uh there are etheris specific monsters and npcs but again you could take them and put them into your world you may need to change their backstory a bit but for the most part, you are uh, you're good to go in in any campaign, but specifically sort of a a horror themed dark yeah. campaign. Oh, that's wild! I uh, I'm super excited about Grim Hollow, um, and I want to make sure that everyone goes and checks out Sean's podcast. It's fantastic. It's called Mastering Dungeons. Uh, his co-host is Teos Abadia. If you like that chat, make sure and send him images of llamas. He loves it. Uh, <laughs> But uh, Sean, uh, I want to thank you for for taking a little bit of time and just chatting with us here. Uh, hopefully, we can have you on again soon, maybe with a a, a more in depth style uh, topic. But uh, everybody, go check out Grim Hollow. Uh, that's at uh, GhostfireGaming.com. Also, uh, check out the Mastering Dungeons podcast on misdirected on the Misdirected Mark Network. Uh, and uh, look for more stuff from uh, Sean on the DMs Guild. I'm sure there's more coming soon. And uh, yep. yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, and uh, is there anything you want to shout out to the crowd before we go and uh, jump into our next segment? No, thanks for having me. I always love to talk gaming with you and, yeah. uh, and llamas, talk llamas with talk you as llamas, well. But yeah. We didn't, <laughs> didn't get a lot of llama talk, but no, next no. time. Next time. All right. Well, then uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get uh, our dear friend Rich back and we're going to jump over here and uh, I guess talk about the adventure. We I know a lot of people are away for uh, Father's Day, but it looks like we have a few people in the chat. So make sure and join in with ideas, um, Sean, so that, you know, our, our normal setup, our normal setup is that uh, Chef Owlbear D, our, uh, our, our lovely chef uh, patron, is the cook at the Explorers uh, uh, Society. <laughs> and uh, he sends the adventurers on weird tasks, typically. Uh, mm -hmm. we've, we've had to go get Axe Beak's eggs. We've had to go to a cyberpunk world where we had to get a, uh, a, a very special uh, spice grinder. We had to go to, I don't know, all kinds of other stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, here mm -hmm. we are. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna build an adventure. So it starts out mm -hmm. with Chef. Uh, sends the PCs off. <laughs> all right. This all right. is all we get at the start. That's it. I, um, I, I've got to jump in because I'm really, I'm, I'm very curious as just an outside observer to, to hear more about llamas. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> so this has been a long going thing, uh, is that, uh, -huh. uh I somehow managed to change, uh, Teos's, uh, Google twit, uh, ad avatar at one point to a drawing of a llama. And uh, oh, when I ha when I had him doing a sound check on going last, I just had him say llama 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 over again, and then I would use that as as outro music. I see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just I grew up just, with llamas. I'm curious, and that's, and that's just <laughs> okay. car carried on for a while. So, um, yeah. So uh, you know, yeah. I love I love the idea of Grimdark. We have a Grimdark author with us right now. What other things? Oh, yeah? it, anyone have anything else? Uh, chat. All right. Yeah. What 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 calls do you, Sean? What are you what are you thinking? Like, uh, what what's what, up? we I need? Mean, 
uh, the the chef is looking for ingredients. Is that? Yeah, that could be. Yeah, a, a, a general, yeah. a general thing. Okay. Or recipes uh, or objects. I mean, the, sh the chef's pretty specific. We've had him in a cooking competition yeah. before, sabotaging rivals. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, here's the thing: they have to go to a quest setting, and the they are it's a quest <laughs> to find the holy llama. Thanks, chat. <laughs> oh, all right. This is great. All right. So, so uh, we are all. <laughs> What's that movie called? What's uh, the Emperor's New Groove? Yeah. So a grim dark Emperor's version of the Groove. Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> All right. What does that uh, look like? What does that sound like? <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, can it be found or is it just a myth? <laughs> and we're going to call we're I, gonna call today's adventure the Grim Dark Llama. The Grim Dark Llama. <laughs> okay. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so many llama jokes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have a feeling that the holy llama is not quite what we think it is. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling that it's going to be probably a wear llama rather than an actual llama. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, we can put that up here in the additional info section. Yeah. So, so is it, do you think this is something we're going to learn, like, in the final moments when we meet the llama? Or is it something that, like along the way we're going to get hints about i think like, along oh. uh, along the way we we need to get hints the the two the two aspects of this sort of dark setting that i pref i like yeah are knowledge is very important and so if you don't have the knowledge before you get there uh, then you're in trouble and you have to be able yeah. to escape get what you need to go back after uh after the the monster right it's sort of a it's a trope that used to be around a lot that it's gotten used less i think mm -hmm. because people want instant gratification yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> you know they don't want to have to do something and then go back but repetition is such right. a great part of storytelling uh that it's it's a powerful tool to use if, if you can get people past that initial idea of failure being the worst thing that could happen yeah, I, I like it because I, I enjoyed playing the I think I played the latest Witcher video game and they have those quests to find the monster, but it takes you linearly to every moment where you find all the information. And I love that you have mm -hmm. it and you go in with knowledge. But what if it wasn't right. a linear path? What if you could just go fight the monster and escape <laughs> and be like, oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so you I know, like and I yeah, and I think I think as, especially with this part of it is 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 tracking the creature down. And you can't track mm -hmm. the keeper down if you don't have the clues. Um, mm -hmm. So let's uh, let maybe let's uh, if anyone in chat has any ideas for clues, uh, I yeah. have one. Uh, the PCs find a uh, scrap of fine cloth with a uh, cloth with some uh, llama uh, llama hair on it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's, a, nice. that's a very basic clue, right? Yeah. You know, to yeah. try to try to tell the story a little bit, like, hey, by the way, this llama may be uh different than you expect and if it's a holy llama it probably has followers oh yeah so you yeah. you come across followers of the holy llama yeah. who can you can go a lot of directions with this the the blunt brute force method would be they attack uh so you want it maybe more subtle than that you want mm -hmm. with some insight checks to see that maybe they're not as holy as uh, they might be, or maybe they are uh, worshipers of the actual Holy Lama, but he, the Holy Lama has been changed uh, depending on the, you know, how you want the whole story to play out. Yeah. Ah. You, you know, and one thing I, I, I like, and in, in maybe this is more because I'm oops, moving my windows around. I shouldn't do that. Uh, maybe this is just because I like weird, like I, I'm a big fan of uh, pulpy, weird type stuff mixed in with mm -hmm. my dark and gritty. What if, what if the, the llama cult, uh, and you know, and it is a cult, is just really strange too. Uh, they do sure. really strange things. So uh, they all wear fur collars and they are overly friendly and touchy. 
right? You know, something mm-hmm. like that. Something, something that 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 would make you uncomfortable if you 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 come across these 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 twenty people dancing around a fire or something, and all of a sudden they just welcome you in the circle, and they all have these weird mm-hmm. fur like around their necks, and and they're like, oh, oh, you know, right? Okay. You know, almost yeah. like almost like flower children, but uh, with a with an edge to them. <laughs> yeah, I, I like this because this is also the opposite of any llama I've ever met, yeah, right? I... So suddenly I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, they're all touchy, and uh, they then they on. spit. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, they, there you they, go. Head straight up, backing away, ready to spit at you. Yeah, um, I, I think we uh, <laughs> saw that one coming. Yeah, yeah, they just um, spit on each other to say hi, right? Yo, know. mm-hmm. <laughs> well, hello, right? travelers. <laughs> all right, Everyone's like, what? Um, I like this. So uh, I, I like it also because it gives us an opportunity for for folks to do some infiltration if they want to. You know, like you were saying, they could go in. And this could be a combat, but maybe this is a way we're going to learn one of the the major weaknesses as well. You know, maybe they mm-hmm. they have to take care to make sure there is no, I mean, not silver. What could be a, like an alternative? Something. There's some th- kind of metal that can't be in the the uh, the holy sanctum or something. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. What what what? Yeah, what it, I mean, it could just as easily be silver, but if you want to change sure. it up to non-wear, uh, you just make it like cold iron or yeah. uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. brass, or so it, it needs to be something that the players would have access to, either normally or they they would have to get at yeah, at the drop of a hat. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, right. Yeah, I always I always think you know silver since it is the default i know a lot of people who would go on like a monster hunter quest would just be like well everything i've got is silver and i always yeah, like the idea that like they're not quite prepared they, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I like they have that. the right but, idea but yeah mm-hmm. all right so uh yeah, so, so so they're gonna need they're gonna need gear they're gonna need cold iron weapons so this is gonna be of course sold by some weird merchant um mm-hmm. in it, i i think this is uh you know things we've seen in other games is is that these weird merchants sometimes are people on the road, like in some fantasy games where they just have this huge backpack and they're just these people you re- meet on the way. And they're like, oh, oh, do you have any of this? They're like, well, I happen to have that or something like that, mm-hmm. right? We could do we could do oh. a traveling merchant. You could also do a traveling merchant, yes, who the pay- players rescue early and he has these weapons, but they don't doesn't mean anything to the players at the time. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, he could thank them. He's not sure why he got attacked. He is just a poor merchant <laughs> selling iron weapons. Yeah, they're not even like as good as steel weapons. Uh, <laughs> and then the players can go back to him later. Yeah. And again, you get that repetition. Uh, yeah. When the players enter the realm, uh, they come across a uh, poor merchant. <laughs> yeah who is getting attacked by we'll just call them goblins for the time being uh they mm-hmm. could be right. something exactly. weirder something wilder um yeah. and uh he only really sells cold iron uh the, the only weapons he has on him there we go right he he's a he's an iron merchant he sells pots and pans and, yeah and right he happens right. to have a few weapons that he's picked up along the way yeah. Now, but, the, the, uh, here's, steel, here's a game great. design tip. Yeah. yeah. Goblins. Uh, you have to be careful, right, when you put something in that's attacking someone. Mm-hmm. What happens if the players c- capture these goblins and question them? And who do you yeah. work for? And why are you here? Mm-hmm. Uh, so either make the goblins something that cannot talk, yeah. make them trained wolves, make them something that can't be communicated with, or put into the, our adventure what information they do give that that ratchets up the intensity and and provides some knowledge without giving away the whole game yeah well let's yeah let's go with this so goblins slash slash wolves uh, the animals yeah, exactly. animals. <laughs> right but that is but that's yeah, yeah. that's valid right like uh whatever is, is, it is there a there... speak with dead animals spell or, right <laughs> <laughs> i mean um, we could do that but we could also give them the opportunity to gain some information which we've already said True. is important. So right. let's see. Uh, potential information gained, right? Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, they were attacking just because. But 
they know of a group of weirdos dancing around in the woods, right? Okay, yep. That's that's perfectly fine as well. Right. And then and then and then what we can do is is we could talk, you know, if they ask about the llama, then it's like, "Oh yeah, no, they have these weird fur things." Mm-hmm. We can get more, into more detail about that, right? If they ask the goblins right. specifically about the llama. Yep. Uh, this Very is good. let's let's go goblins, right? Uh, goblins. So, and then the merchant. What information might the merchant have? So I see a, a note here in the chat, and I I just I love merchants like that you just happen to find, right? So I, I love the idea that the, all the weapons are strangely pot shaped. Maybe when they find this merchant the first time. They don't really have much, you know, they, they've got pots and pans and things, but they don't seem, you know, they're very, very tinkerly for the most part. Um, and maybe when you come back, like you can either make weapons out of those, like a mace that's really just a, a huge pot at the end of a stick um, that'll do the job when it comes down to it. Yeah. Or maybe it is like you ask for weapons and the, the merchant who's been like this, like hapless, oh my gosh, somebody help me, like stops for a second and gets like this smile on their face and like... Why mm-hmm. would you need weapons? And just is sudden like I don't sell weapons, but I'll offer you weapons. <laughs> you know, kind of like that yeah. merchant at the crossroads style. Yeah, um, I'll bargain for them somehow. Could be right. a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I like that. A and, lot. and thank you, Dave. Uh, in the chat, it's Dave Rosser. So thank you, Dave. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Uh, all right. So, uh, what, what could the merchant possibly know that, that, that could guide the heroes on if they don't talk to the goblins? Um, I mean, probably the same thing, right? We, we want, we want whatever outcome happens here. They, they know there's somebody in the woods, somebody dancing out there. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Maybe the the goblins knows know that they are dangerous and they try to stay away from them. Maybe the merchant knows I tried to sell to them, but I didn't. You know, they didn't buy anything. They seemed to have everything they needed. Yeah. yeah. Or or he tried to sell them things, and since it was cold iron, they were very uh, dismissive of him. They basically ran him away. Yeah. Uh, when oh. he when he showed them their his goods. Mm-hmm. Uh... I like that. And we don't exactly know why yet, but maybe like a, a player would pick up on it and go, is it because it's all iron? Okay, I buy it all, you know. <laughs> yeah. They could get, but I like that hint. That's very good. Yeah, yep. no, that's, that's a good hint. I like that. All right, so we have, you know, this sounds like this is probably, I, I put it as encounter X. Uh, I think this is encounter one, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and then so let's, uh, let's look at encounter two because it looks like uh, encounter two is uh, the PCs, uh, either run into something on the way, uh, the PCs either run into something on the way uh, to the cult, uh, yeah, or they just run into the cult. Mm-hmm. Right. I guess that's the question. Do we want do we want something to disturb them at this point, or should they get over there? Is there just three encounters? Are we doing I, I like... this infiltration mission and then like the llama? <laughs> Here, here's my proposal for encounter two. Uh, this is a skill challenge because I love using four E skill challenges. Ah, there okay. You go. And if they fail, they will, uh, you know, run into a fighting encounter. Mm-hmm that will get them closer to the uh, cult is, is my thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I gotcha. No, I, I like that idea. And we could also outside of the mechanics of the encounter, we can up the stakes here. Mm, yeah. You know, what, what's going to happen if they fail? What's the threat uh, in the area that is driving them? Mm-hmm. And, Oh, I like I'm, that. I'm open to ideas on that one. Uh, yeah. Is it has has there been are there disappearances in the area recently? Uh, yeah. What? Uh, right. uh, Let's see. How do we have the stakes? Oh, I like something in the chat. Something the cults accidentally summoned. Um, that could be fun too. There's something else out here. Um, I, in my head, I was like, well, of course, there needs to be bloody llama tracks somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> there needs to be like evidence yeah. of the. The uh, oh, that's not that's strange. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I mean, oh, here, challenge one, right? Uh, challenge one, uh, bloody footprints of a llama. Um, right, so you could track them backwards a little ways. All the llamas are gone, <laughs> or they're way too many. Or, <laughs> I both, both being horrifying concepts. 
I I kind of love there being like too many llamas, right? Uh, yeah. Too many llamas, and they're and and uh, they eat flesh, right? Uh, because and they're and they're <laughs> yeah, and they're very friendly um, and touchy, right? <laughs> Is, I think that's what you said earlier about the folks. Yeah. So like maybe they are they have some of the similar characteristics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they seem friendly. And then uh, you approach. And, until yeah. <laughs> they bite. There we go. Uh, so uh, so the, the scene starts. The uh, PCs head to where they... Oops. Yeah, no, no. Uh, head to where they were told of the um, cult. And the mm -hmm. first thing is they meet a llama who bites them <laughs> right right uh, and then starts to chase them and maybe now let's see the llama yeah. is at if the, if there's a path maybe there's a campsite that's used by people a lot so everyone's gone except there's a fire that's smoking so obviously people were just here but now all that's here is this one llama Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Covered in blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that, I love it. that ups the creepy factor right there. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. Uh, I, I think along the way, they uh, we should definitely see a little bit of, uh, like, as as the skill challenge goes, goes on, we're going to see more llamas kind of join in. And there's eventually going to be a mm -hmm. pack of bloodthirsty llamas chasing them up right. until right before they get to the camp. Then all the llamas disperse. Uh, yeah, I love that. Right. Because this first now one's going to run, right? We're going to be tracking yeah. it. <laughs> right. We, yeah. we need to make a new monster swarm of llamas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. Let's see here. So llamas chase the PCs uh, and disperse right before <laughs> they get to the cult's camp. Just a swarm of llamas. Just yeah. wading through. As, um, as, as one does. One of my favorite Pathfinder spells was Swarm yeah. of Monkeys, so I'm in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, we're looking at this skill challenge. So one, uh, one. let's see. So I was thinking the, the first llama was going to chase them, but you're thinking that the PCs chased a llama. I like that. Yeah. Because thematically, that makes the players think they're in charge. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They're acting. They're they're moving, they're the heroes. And then you, as they move through this, they may begin to realize that the opposite is the case. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Back. And then, uh, yeah, so then uh, along the ways after, once the PCs, you know, go to fight back or anything, that llama takes off. And uh, at some point, they realize they are being chased by the swarm of llama monsters. <laughs> Now it's about escaping. Now it's they're about surrounded. Escaping. Now they're getting closer. Yeah. <laughs> Keep running. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. No. This is it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, yep. me, a bondo. Uh, says uh, <laughs> llamas bait the players into a trap, and that's right. And I think that's good, and that leads to you know, and that's that's the skill challenge, right? The skill challenge is not to find is is not to find the cultists. Uh, not to find the cultists. But it is to uh, escape the trap, mm -hmm. right? So escape these llamas, right? Exactly. Um, and so either you you face the swarm, or you make it to the light of uh, this encampment in the distance, right? But maybe uh, we've we've got some ruins. Maybe we've got some houses. Who knows? Um, mm -hmm. But you find what you're looking for. Yep. And now th at the end of this, if they fail the skill challenge, the swarm attacks. We can make this a super deadly encounter. Oh, yeah. But before, you know, three rounds in, one of the cultists comes forward and the llamas scatter. Yeah, super deadly. Or, you know, yep. Uh, we'll see, you know, uh, round four or when uh, one PC drops to zero. <laughs> yep. I like it. Um, and so they come in and they're like, shoo, shoo, come on, we'll, we'll take care of you. Like, come on in. <laughs> Yeah, the are they are they super nice about it? Yeah. Okay. The, then welcome oh, yeah. the party in uh, with open arms, and uh, and yeah, and that's and that's when when the things get get weird. <laughs> Instead of the dark mist of Ravenloft, it's the dark wool of Lamadum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. 
Encounter three. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Encounter three. I've been saying llama camp, but it may be or llama cultist camp, but it could be llama cultist compound. Sure. <laughs> right. You know, it, in the compound consists of <laughs> like you know three or four standing structures. Right. Not much. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, in some tents uh, <laughs> and a big fire in the middle or a big fire pit. Great. Right. Yeah. And I Dave feel like one another... of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Richard. Go ahead. Oh, I just feel like one of those buildings should be off limits, right? That's the deal. You're welcome yeah. here, but you can't yeah. go in that building. We're not oh, going to tell yeah, you that. You have to. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. One building. Yeah, Dave, Dave had a great idea of... They won't bite anyone wearing a llama uh, cultist coat cloak. Oh, okay. So maybe Ooh. the cultist runs in and puts this cloak around the the PCs. And... <laughs> I I still oh, like that's great. The, the, the weird fur <laughs> necklace. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, the fur collar. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the fur collar would be fun, and it's itchy and it doesn't feel great, right? Uh, I love at the end of this, yeah. when they leave this compound, they're going to be wearing these and these llamas will be everywhere, just watching them from the yeah. trees. And they're just like carefully walking back to town. <laughs> yeah, a itchy fur necklace. Uh, oh, neck that's great. Coverings. <laughs> uh, that the llamas won't attack them. All right. I love it. <laughs> OK. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. One building is off limits. What is in that building? I mean, definitely the Weir Llama, right? The Weir Llama is in there. <laughs> is that the yeah. Weir Llama's home? And uh, That's... yeah, so, they come out yeah, when you they want choose. To... Maybe yeah. we meet them. But... Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, so I'm thinking like we never we we have to get in there to get the Weir Llama uh, because this cult isn't worshiping uh, the Weir Llama, uh, but they are. Tr uh, t using it using its powers uh for evil right Ooh. so so yeah. so so this 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 llama that this were llama uh is uh <laughs> is 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 a tool for their mm -hmm. their their regional domination because in grimdark yeah. you don't think of the entire world you just think of your region <laughs> exactly and it doesn't necessarily even have to be an evil were llama Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Although, you know, that could be a twist as well. That could be. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that would be wild. Like maybe it is the master. So it is turning these other llamas into kind of more uh, carnivorous creatures. But the master itself is not is not an evil right. being. It just oh, has can right. spread the gift. <laughs> and, and, the, and the cultists are, are training the were llamas to or becoming were llamas themselves. Right. Uh, oh, this is good. Maybe yeah. the the weird llamas are more like weird ravens. Like they are supposed to be this benevolent force. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the cultists are becoming weird llamas, uh, taking the power from our uh, our what is it? Holy llama. Holy llama. Holy llama. Yeah. Uh, and the holy llama, like the holy llama, is evil. Uh, but okay, okay. <laughs> is evil, right? Right, is evil. Uh, but the cultists are a little more evil. <laughs> okay, I see, that, I see. that works too. Right. Yeah. So, so you know, so they have yeah. the the holy llama. I, I I like the idea of rescuing the holy llama and then getting attacked mm -hmm. by the holy llama. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Bam. All right. So. Uh, during this adventure, I think our PC should learn how to subdue or some way of, um, let's see here. So do we put a section for general knowledge that they should get? Oh, that's clues. Uh, let's do that. Uh, the Holy Llama, how, how the Holy Llama can be subdued, right? Because we're supposed to bring the Holy Llama back to the Adventuring Society. So how can the Holy oh. Llama be <laughs> subdued? Unless, unless, it's, unless it's not to bring it back, it's just to uh, defeat it. So what was what was Chef Alberti's task? I think we kind of moved past that and we yeah. <laughs> just jumped into the yeah. Holy Llama. Um, could it could it be we need llama milk? Oh, perfect. Uh, they need Holy yeah. Llama milk. Holy Llama milk for a recipe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, and just you know the the addition of some sort of um, mutation uh, would help maybe. So so 
the chef has heard some rumors about a pretty strange llama out here. I don't know. Go check it out. <laughs> exactly. All right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so they need to at, at least knock it unconscious and milk it. Least knock the uh, holy llama out. Uh, knock it out. Oh, Jesus. Brain. Uh, not at least not to milk it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. Can they milk it if they kill it? That's a great question. <laughs> one of those uh, Google searches <laughs> that you you hope no one else re exactly. can you milk a dead llama? I, wow! Yeah. <laughs> someone in our someone in the audience obviously must know if you could milk a. Dead oh llama. yeah! Oh yeah! Wow. <laughs> but I mean, you know, from a game standpoint, do we? Yes. Is, there could be a reason why you have to milk it alive, right? You know, there could be some kind of sure. magical reason. Uh, I think that's okay, <laughs> and, and I think that's and I think that's the problem. That's it, right? Uh, yeah. like, and it has to be alive, uh, alive for the magic to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got our we've got our cold iron. We've got some some other information about how to deal with this creature that we've learned along the way. Yeah. We we use it to the best of our ability to knock this thing out. Um. I mean, in, in this game, that just means we have to decide at the end that it's going to be a subdual hit, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, depending on what system difference. we're playing in, right? We, we didn't oh, design fair. a system when we yeah. never do. Uh, but, right. you know, like, say say somebody picked this up and they wanted to do a 2D20 system, right? They could if mm -hmm. they wanted to do whatever, right? We're just we're just making the outline. Uh, right, right. Thinking D&D-wise, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I think yeah. in... A lot of modern games, I'm not exactly sure. I think subdual is just as easy as, as lethal damage. I, I'm trying to think of one that... Pathfinder 2. Oh, all right. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think we like our options open these yeah. days. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure with a lot true, of because, with a lot yeah. of more story-based games, it, there is not really any difference exactly. between the two. Yeah. Yeah. You just say yeah. what you want to do, and you do it. All and right. You do it. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so we kind of got, you know, the basic, basic outline of our adventure. Uh, one thing I wow. do like to touch on is rewards. Uh, mm -hmm. And I like coming up with really fun rewards for this, for these kinds of adventures, oh, yeah. uh, because they're weird, uh, and uh, we can come up with weird rewards. So, what do you guys think? It, it's a, it's an adventure to go get llama milk, where you're attacked mm -hmm. by llamas. I feel like it has to be llama related. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it could be like the uh, uh, scraggy llama tooth of blah 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 blah, right? Yeah. I mean, llama wool will make magical cloaks, I'm sure. Yeah. Llama right. wool cloaks. And, you know, uh, it's some... if you don't make a cloak of spitting uh, <laughs> with 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 the llama wool after uh -huh. all the spitting that we've had in this adventure. And of course, the where llama will spit and mm -hmm. and, you know, you have to have a cloak of spitting uh, yeah, and right. then do with that what you will. But yeah, you know, it has, uh, you know, uh, max six charges sure. and uh you oh, roll one d6 at the start of the day day to get your charges and with those charges you can spit at an opponent mm -hmm. i mean that is fair i i was uh let's see yeah uh, i was just gonna take a look through some cantrips because i think there is one that is just like a, a poison spit right oh, like even folks yeah, po well, poison spray, right? spray. Yeah. yeah 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 would be perfect so here's my thought and i, I typed it out first uh you can spit at an <laughs> opponent which gives your allies advantage on their next attack there you oh go. very nice yeah, i like that, that. works I, I, I like I like things being kind of fun, and I, I I love the idea of like helping being helping other players out. And this seems weird, right? You you spin an action, you spit in their their eyes, and then they're just distracted, uh, yeah. you know. And so so that gives gives your allies the the advantage to talk. And I I think that's a fantastic reward. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there we go. We outlined Perfect. another adventure. <laughs> you can take this oh you can gosh. take this one this classy one to press sean this is, this I, is I was gonna say I'm, I'm i'm still working on monsters for the monster grimoire and i'm still working on the layers <laughs> portion of the rewards of monster layers and i'm like dude this sounds like a uh sounds like a monster layer if i've ever heard one right wow there it is yeah 
It, it's there. It's it's yours to do with what you please. We came with it well, together. <laughs> That's right. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I I do like uh the the and the opposite. A scroll of face shield. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. As a uh, as a as a reaction, you can add plus five to your face. Uh. <laughs> right. The other one that that I would try to build, I think, is the hum, like the llama hum um, uh -huh. that comes up right before they start spitting. I would love that as like yeah. almost some sort of sonic ability you have to just yeah. just make people tense and afraid. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. So That's good. great. <laughs> All right. Well, I will get this up in the Google Drive, Rich, and we can add it to our collection for Absolutely. when we share it to everyone. Uh, someday. Someday. <laughs> someday. <laughs> well, Sean, uh, I think that that does it for our adventure. So thank you so much for, for joining in and writing this adventure. And, this was so uh, fun. This was fun. This yeah. was really fun. It was, it, was really, uh, it was really fun to have you on the show, and I hope we get to wrangle you on the show again soon. Thank you so much. I love talking with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's uh jump on over to the wrap up we'll wrap this show up and uh yes. we will uh you know uh, wrap it up so um everybody thanks so much for joining us and hanging out with us today we had the fantastic sean Morwin on the show uh once again thank you so much for hanging out with us today oh, it was fantastic uh look for this on youtube make sure to subscribe on youtube uh additionally we do have a patreon uh go ahead and hit that patreon join the uh join the the society and uh yeah i think that's it um uh, rich is there anywhere anything that folks can be looking for you in the next uh, few days my goodness i don't think so for once i think I, i'm moving on to the academy our summer camp starts tomorrow which i'm really excited about um mm -hmm. hopefully we'll have more information about dnd live coming up uh in about a month so yeah I'll have right. some stuff. Don't you worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about course, you? Uh, always follow me over there on DJ Pirate Rabbits on Twitch. Uh, I'm, of course, going to be doing my DJ streams. Additionally, I am going to do a stream on Thursday where uh, we watch an old, uh, an old uh, pirate show and comment on it and see how that goes. And uh, I'm going to just be bringing random guests on for that as well. So it should be a ton of fun. Awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And we'll see you all next week with uh, yeah. more soup. So remember, keep those crock pots on warm. All right, have a good one, everyone.